we can't always do randomized control trials. Obviously, we can't choose, like, we don't get to randomly assign wars, fortunately. Uh, so, you know, it's often not practical, ethical, feasible, for very, very, various reasons. We generally can't do this in the social sciences. Um, though, actually, or, and we have one of the best centers, I think, of people who actually do experimental stuff in uh, political science and economics. But um, their life is easier. We have to deal with other things. And so, and so the, you know, the, the general response to this is, is to run some regression model. Um, but, so, one of the biggest problems which pretty much everyone who's done regression knows about is, is the idea of model dependence. That, uh, you know, we know that we sort of need to control for a bunch of things, but we really have no idea how to control for them. Um, we don't know the correct functional form. We don't know the correct functional form of, you know, what transformations we should take of our key independent variable and the other independent variables. Um, we don't know how many controls to include, how to code those. And th so there's just this proliferation of decisions that we make that we don't really have uh, much reason to do, you know, much reason um, by which to make them other than, you know, what's been done in the past or what seemed reasonable or what gave us the best R squared, which would probably <laughs> anger a lot of people. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is a really big problem, um, uh, particularly whenever you're dealing with observational data. Um, so, so the idea is that, that matching is going to help us get a better solution to this. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of the math, partly because um, I'm completely unqualified to go through the math, and partly because this is, I mean, mainly want to show the software. Um, just to give a little bit, so I'm, I'm taking this from uh, an article by, by Gary King and some of his colleagues um, explaining the match at software, which is quite good. Uh, so we're interested in some outcome, um, and we observe I, uh, YI, we have N observations. Um, that can be whatever you want, that can be, I'm trying to think of a good example in television, I don't know, it didn't, how many people watch the show or something, I don't know. Uh, any, any outcome that you're interested in. Um, and so for, for each of these we have uh, XI, which is going to be an indicator for whether or not uh, that unit received some treatment. Um, so again, in my example, that's going to be involvement in a war. Um, and it, this is much easier when you have dichotomous treatments. Apparently you can do it for other ones, but I actually don't know much about that. Uh, but so, so again, so yeah, we want to figure out the, the causal impact of this, this treatment hex on on Y. And we've also got, uh, for each observation, a set of covariates, which I'm calling ZI, could be one, could be thousands. Um, and, so, uh, and so essentially we're worried that these covariates are, are making it so um, you know, we, we, we can't just do a simple difference of means test to, to, to get the right uh, causal, you know, causal effect of X on Y. Um, so, so a little more notation, so we're call, call this YI1, so that, that's the observed outcome if unit I is treated. And then this YI0 is the outcome if not treated. And so the, the, the problem is that, or, so yeah, and the problem is, I'm sort of getting at here, is that we, we only observe one of these. So uh, for, for, for each person in this study, even if you have a, a randomized control trial, you don't get to treat someone and not treat someone, you only get to do half of it. Um, and so, uh, so in a sense, you know, this, this causal effect for each unit, y i one minus y i zero, is an unobservable quantity. Um, as is this, as is the, the, the sort of the, the correct average treatment effect, which is generally what we're going to get to look at. Um, we, we really never know that. Uh, but so, but so, this is what we do observe. We do observe this y i, which is, you know, what would happen if they're treated times an indicator for if they're treated. What would happen if they are treated times an indicator if they're not. I said, sorry, I may go, stop me at any time if I'm not making, if I'm not making sense. Um, and so, so again, if, if, if treatment is random, then, then you can make this step of, of going from uh, the left, or the top there, from, so the top there is uh, what we observe, and the bottom here is uh, what, what we want. This is sort of the true treatment, of, or no, yes, no, this is what we observe. This is kind of the observed treatment effect, that's sort of the, the true treatment effect. And, and it, seemed, it should seem relatively intuitive. Uh, again, you can go through equations if you want to find them somewhere. They're, they're all over the place. Uh, to, to show that if there's random assignment, then these two, in, ex in expectation, these two quantities are equal. Um, but so if, if these covariates, uh, let's just say z, if, if the covariates z um, are related to both the treatment and the outcome, then, then you can't make this inference, um, which is something that, that probably is, it's, uh, probably most of us sort of na naturally understand if not going through the math that um, if the people who are treated are systematically different than those who aren't treated, uh, then sort of 
what, what we observe in the difference between the treated and untreated may not be the true causal effect, um, which is just a problem that comes up a lot, and I'll be showing you uh, some simulated data and some real data where this is actually the case. So, so how do we solve this? Um, so, so sort of a very basic uh, matching solution is um, you, you only keep treated observations and non-treated observations that exactly match on every covariate. Um, and so, you know, so if you do that, then it should seem pretty intuitive that, that then you can make the leap to this step. In fact, you're even better than a randomized control trial because you know that they're exactly the same on the covariates. Uh, so, so you don't really have to worry about, um, uh, you know, making this inference to figuring out the causal impact just by uh, observing the treated and untreated. Um, a more common solution now, uh, so, so this is sort of half of the default solution that, that, we'll be, that I'll be showing you. Um, it, so, so for each treated observation, for each, for each leader who gets in a conflict, uh, we, we want to pick another one who's very close on the other covariates. Um, and there are lots of ways to do that. But, but again, it, it's creating the same idea that you want to make the, the treatment and the control group as similar as possible. And then, then we can sort of make valid inferences. Um, and so this is often combined with, uh, so the, the early literature on this talks a lot about propensity scores, um, which is, so essentially you, 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 you have a separate model for whether or not uh, the unit is treated based on the covariates. And then you also want to uh, compare, so you want your treatment and control group to be similar on that propensity score as well. Um, so if you have a good model of, of what actually leads to the treatment, which um, we, in general we like to think we have good theories to figure this out, uh, then that, that can aid in um, so, you, you know, it's better than just looking at the covariates. You also want to focus on uh, the actual likelihood of being treated. And I think this works on its own as well under, or asymptotic at least. Uh, and so, actually, and, and one method which I'm going to talk about a bit too is, so, so imagine, so again, so the problem with this exact matching is, say you have a continuous variable, you're, you're never going to get an exact match on that. Um, or, you know, measure theoretically or something. You're never going to get an exact match. So you, you can take all your continuous variables and your non-continuous variables and essentially coarsen them. Um, and that's what I think about this is imagine you, imagine going from, this, this is sort of, if you had a table of all your covariates and you're only uh, comparing units that match in that table, think of this as you're making an n-dimensional histogram. And so, so you're sort of putting everyone into boxes and then you're only going to compare treated and control units that are in the same box. Um, so, you know, you may want to say, I'll, so, you know, one thing I'm going to look at is, is you know, GDP growth. Uh, and so you can break that into five categories and then only compare people who are in that same category. Uh, and, so, and so, in general, you know, the, the idea of doing all these things, and again, I'm, I'm not showing you any math, but, you, you know, they all, for better or worse, asymptotically, under certain assumptions, uh, will make it so you can um, uh, make this leap from the uh, observed treatment effect to sort of a true causal treatment effect. So uh, let's do some R. Let's, let's do a simulation. Um, so again, we want to look at the effect of X on Y, and we've got uh, just a single co confounding variable Z. Um, and he, so here, here's the data generating process. Um, so our X, so our, whether or not you're treated as a function of this Z, uh, and so then, at, you know, and then the, the outcome we're interested in is a function of both X and also the confounding variable. Um, and so I sort of rigged this up so the confounding stuff is much more important, 5 versus 0.1, um, kind of for dramatic effects, but uh, it'll make the effect dramatic, so that's good. <laughs> um, and so, so, so the question is, so again, keep in mind, you know, we're simulating data here, but if we were, you know, behind the shield, we, we wouldn't know this. And so the question is, can, can we, you know, come up with some regression model that'll recover this, this correct coefficient on x uh, without actually knowing these functional forms? Um, and for those who've done this before, you probably know the, the answer is no. Pretty much. Uh, so, so here's the simulation. Uh, you know, I'm simulating Z. I'm coming up with my transform. I, I think we've. Well, I'm saying most people are, are familiar with the R unit of R norm functions to simulate random variables. Um, so we simulate our data, put it all together, and so I've got sort of three models here that, that attempt to, to to recover that beta equals 0.1 parameter uh, without doing any matching. And so it, it really doesn't work at all. So in this first model, we actually get a negative effect. You know, it's negative, strongly significant, uh-oh. Um, and, but, you know, it, wrong, wrong direction, even a higher magnitude than, than the correct, uh, than the correct effect. I'm oh, sorry, so this is without controlling for Z, in, in effect. Um, 
So the, the second model, okay, yeah, we're controlling for z, but we haven't specified the functional form correctly. 